Hello there, everyone. It is I, uh, Soul Silver Seventeen here. Let me give you this like usual. The now in this picture, now in the paid video. All right, okay. So here's the thing. Um, I was making a new what if. Well, I was gonna make a new what if Azuku idea. Well, actually, I already had the idea. I'm just was trying to make the video, and I was tired. And well, I decided that would be a one. Like I had like two other ideas for Azuku. Well. The idea that I was going to make, and then the other idea. Um, but I'm going to not... I decided to make this one what if, this what if first. Because I'm going to go back to some Naruto ones. I'm going to like continue like on before I make any new Zuku what ifs. And probably try to finish some off for a while. You know? So, but anyways. We're going to continue on where we left off. Is where we found out Azawa and... The reincarnation of Dr. Enko Midoriya, well technically, and the great-great-granddaughter of her, that looks exactly like her, is, well, you know, getting, getting, getting married and stuff, and basically, they're gonna adopt Izuku along with, like, Manning, Issei, and Mark, who are still alive because of their, because of their quirks, you know, Senator, Vice, um, Senator, you know, Governor, whatever, so, yeah. Anyways, you know, we're gonna go to where we left off in this, so... And, before anyone asks, I am bringing in almost all the villains of the Sonic franchise into this What If series. But, not every one. I'm only a select few. I don't know them all. I know Metal Sonic, Mecha Sonic, I think. I think Metal and Mecha are different, so... You know, um, Dr. Rob Dr. Eggman, um, what else, I, I am, I think that's all I know of, actually, sheesh, I did not read any of the Archie comics, so, I don't know, I do know there's Scourge the Hedgehog, and his, well, and, you know, versions of, you know, of the people that Sonic has, you know, like, Rosie the Rascal, basically, Amy Rose, but just way more crazy, Fiona basically was a part of Sonic's world, but then went over to his, you know, world with Scourge. Um, you know, Sally Acorn's there too, and, well, yeah. But in this case, we're going to meet a couple of new people, and we're going to have, like, an instance where Shadow is introduced to everyone. You know. So anyways, let's get into this. This what if... Deku was Shadow the Hedgehog, part two. So, as we left off, you know, Shadow was asleep. You know, fell asleep in a room, basically, that Aizawa and Inko gave to him. So, we're wa he's waking up now, and he's thinking, uh, was that just a... He looks around and like, uh, it wasn't a dream. Great. And... Uh, I may have thought it was a dream all at first, but <laughs> I was wrong. Eh, can't blame me. So he gets up, gets back on his jacket and you know sneakers, and he walks out of his room, and he sees Inko and Aizawa there. He goes like, "Hey, morning, everyone." They look at him. They both say, "Morning." Aizawa is just saying this. So we're gonna go to. Where Issei and Mark are, right? Inko says, mm-hmm. We're gonna get everything filed and, well, have it legalized. He's like, great. <laughs> Let's hope it's nothing too bad, Shadow says. So, the, she makes him breakfast, they eat, and they head off. It takes a good hour to get there, so, I mean... So, basically, when they get there, he just looks at that building and he goes like... I didn't know the governor's building looked this big. And Azal just says, Trust me, there's little floors underneath it, so it's a lot bigger than it looks. It was noted. So, you know, they go into the side of the building, they see, like, someone there that's in, the, like, a secretary, but, like, you know, at the bottom floor, basically. And they said, Do you have an appointment with anyone here? And they say, um, Inko then says, Hi, my name is Inka Midoriya. I'm, uh, and then she goes, oh, no need, no, no need, no need to say anything else. They're waiting for you. 
and they like, thank you. So basically, they go to the elevator, top floor, and, well, you know. They get into, I think I made Issei. No, Issei is a guy who, okay, it was one of them too. Like, they see Issei and Mark. I didn't, I know, I did not watch the whole entire video that I made in part one, FYI, I just to let you know, guys, because I totally fell asleep. And I think I, I made one of them the governor. I think it was Mark. And he said, yeah. Yeah, I believe. You guys can correct me on that. But if it's the other way around, then, yeah. Uh, ignore me, then. So, anyways. So, you know, when they walk in, they see Mark and Issei. And, well, they say, ah, oh, welcome. You know, Mark says. He bas I, mean, he bas I mean, he tells them to sit down and such. And so, what happens is... You know, Shadow's, I mean, he only sees two seats, so he decides to stand. And then he folds his arm, he goes, so, how are we going to do this? Is there's like a place we have to go to? And then they're like, they, Mark and you say both laugh. They say we already have everything set up. And they, they move, Mark moves his hand to the right, and they show basically a um, tarp, you know, tarp on the wall, basically going down. And they say just stand right in front of that. And so... Shadow does. They take the picture and they basically have it onto the documents. You know, they print. It out, they put it on the document, print it out, and then they write everything else for Shadow. They said they're like, so wait, how are we going to? You know, say I'm in, I was in an orphanage. Mark, just like Issa, Issa goes. Well, I do own an orphanage. I keep it running at least. And besides. It's actually nearby, <laughs> which Shadow's looks at me like, uh, uh, okay, I know you're trying to redeem yourself for killing, like, you know, Maria, but, wow, that's, that's a lot. He was like, he said just shrugs. So, I mean, he calls up a place, I mean, he calls up the, the orphanage, he, he re-explained it, you know, everything up to them, they said, we're going to transfer the files to of shadow over to you guys just be ready for them let me know and so in a few minutes they said they got it and they transfer i mean then they file it right back over to them you know and then she just has inko and aizawa sign the papers and such and yeah it's just a transfer which went through the legal system since they're the governor and all it just went through real quick like really quick so because of that it only took a day, and he was already, he just was adopted. He's like, huh. So this is how it feels to be adopted into an actual family. <laughs> I mean, Shadow says, uh, and he goes, wait, actually, everyone I knew was my family. So I guess it's a, a family again? Huh. Oh, well. So, um, after that, uh, Mark looks at Issa, Issa, no, it's over to him. And they say, Shadow, we want to tell you something. We know that, well, you're going to probably do things that are against the laws if you need it. Help people out. And you don't want to go to a hero school. And he goes, yep, pretty much. Kind of very smart enough already. And they nod. So, we, um... <clears throat> contacted someone, a worldwide, not agency, but military force, you could say, as Dan Shadow says, mercenaries, no, n Mark, I mean, Issa goes, no, 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 not mercenaries, no, this is legit, like, the worldwide government, like, worldwide military, like, every freaking person that's, you know, the United States, Germany, you know, he goes so on and so forth, he says. I, I can only name a few, like, I'm just, like, England, um, Japan, you know, he was like, so, every one of those continents, states, whatever you want to call them, he says, are, owns this military, and they not, and it, they say it's called the gun, basically, as, he was, uh, wow, weird name, he was, yeah, but still. I mean, we told them about you, they understand your situation, and they're willing to, well, have you work with them, 
you're allowed to do what you need or what you want and stay in Japan, but as long as you help out with them once in a while, Issei continues on. And Shadow just shrugs and goes like, alright, we'll have any partners. And he just says, yes, one. Her name, well, believe it or not, her quirk is the bat, like, you know, she has bat wings and she's very, she has very good hearing because, well, because her quirk is a bat, you know, her quirk is a bat. Just, which, Mark and Issei nod. And he goes say, okay, what's her name? Rouge the Bat. He's like, why? Is that like her full name or code name? Code name. Full first name Rouge, but she just prefers us to call her that anyways. He's like, what was she? Okay, so was she like a hero student or something? Like, which Mar says, no, a thief, treasure hunter thief actually, which shatters us like. So wait, you let a thief join gun for what reason? That we said this says, believe it or not, she broke into the most secure locations. This steal the jewelry there and basically was never caught. And then Shadow says, yeah, yeah, I can see why. All right. So, and then yeah. So wait, would I have like a license or something? Then you're like, mm-hmm. A license that way or no hero can ever stop you. I mean, you won't be in the system at all as a hero, but still. Which, again, Shadow just looks at them and shrugs. You're like, whatever, fine, I'll join. Is there any pavement I'll get or anything? If I stop any, you know, crimes and such? Which, they do not. The pay is a very, very good sum. Even most pro heroes won't even get. He's like, wait, huh? How much? And they just say a very high number that leaves Inko, Aizawa, and Shadow speechless. And they're like, wait, why so much? And he goes like, and then Issei just says, before Mark says, he goes, oh, because the jobs you'll be doing, if they ask of you to, it's very far away, very dangerous, and basically if you're your unique skill set, it may even basically leave you with a lot of, I don't know, trauma. It's like, I already have enough trauma. What else can I get? Mark does says, I, I, I wouldn't have said it like that. I would just say, going to unique places that would be very dangerous and risk his life. And he said just shrugs and be like, I just said the truth. Since he is still just a teen. He's like, which Mark sighs and goes, like, all right, all right, whatever. All right, so you're already willing to join, even though he goes, yeah, I have, I need to do something. I don't want to go to school, so I'd rather just take the job offer then. Which Mark says, great, here's your, here's your license. Which he was like, you guys planned this out already. You already had it made. You already knew I was going to say yes. And they both, and Mark does says, I know you way too well, Shadow. He has such a little smile as, Shadow just sighs and he goes like, good grief. <sighs> Alright, so he takes the license and it does say special agent, you know, for gun. Shadow, codename, Shadow the Hedgehog. And he's like, <clears throat> just because I have a hedgehog, I mean, just because I have a speed quirk. That came from someone that was a hedgehog. Does that mean I'm a hedgehog? I think. Wait. He processes and he goes like, it would make me a hedgehog. <sighs> Whatever. So he just puts the, um, he doesn't even have a wallet. He realizes he was like, wait, I don't even have a wallet, which Issei throws it to him and along with a phone. He goes like, any contacts, you know, you need already in there. Your mom, your dad's, mine, and, you know, Mark's, basically. And basically, since you already know you have a driver's license on you, which he nods and puts them both in his wallet. He was like, so wait, am I like a secret agent even the government of Japan, you know, doesn't even know about? And like, oh, no, the government of Japan knows. We, we know, and <laughs> that is also for a hero license work. So basically... 
if we find someone that is like a evil organization that is made of villains, you're like since you're here, you'll be the first one to call. I mean, Bruges is coming over here in the next couple of weeks, and you're gonna meet her. It's like great. <laughs> As then, all of a sudden, they hear explosions nearby, which Cho goes to the window and sees it. And, well, Aizawa just says, I mean, sees it and he goes like, Dr. Eggman. Which, he's, he more just says, Shadow, you know what to do, at exactly the same time. And he nods. And all of a sudden, somehow in some way, the chem Chaos Emerald peers into his hand. Which, Aizawa was like, where do you even keep that? And Shao just shrugs it like, I don't know. I mean, I just touched it and I mean, I held on to it and all of a sudden it was gone. Like, I didn't notice until, well, last, until this morning. I didn't know where it was. Why do I even keep this? He says out loud. And he says, I'll figure it out later. And so he shouts out, Chaos Control! And he just disappears. Inko just says, I have a feeling he's going to be very, very active in fighting a lot of these new, well, villains that are coming out the woodwork, right? As Alan nods and he says, and he already has his hero license. If anyone from my students at UA find out, they're going to be like, how? What, am I allowed to tell them or no? Which Mark and he say not no. And he's like, ah, I don't get paid enough for this. So, Inko kind of laughs at that, Mark, you know, Issei chuckle, and meanwhile, with, where Shadow is, he's on top of the building that was nearby the explosions. He's seeing an aircraft, and multiple robots, it seems like, and he's like, what the? I don't have no, I don't have time to figure out who's making this trouble. There's a whole bunch of civilians. He's looking around, he's trying to see, like, who's in danger. He just sees a lot of people running away. And then, next thing you know, he hears a girl scream for help. And which, when he, when he's about to run, he sees a blue blur just come out of nowhere, just grabs her, you know, and run over to an area of safety. He just tells her, get out of here. And then he hears, uh, well, he sees a boy with two tails flying around, you know, like destroying the flying robots, you know. One with red hair, a uh, weird mark on his shirt, but he's just punching a robot. And he just, and he's like, huh? Are these heroes or nah? They're students, right? Wait, blue hair moves real fast. Well, kind of looks like, kind of looks like a hedgehog, I think. Yeah, kind of does almost. And then she, you know. He basically jumps onto the rooftop near them, which they didn't know because they're paying attention to only a fight. And he hears the boy with two tails, and he says, Sonic, basically. And when she goes, wait, that's Sonic? Huh. Well, it looks like, I'm, looks like I don't need to worry about. As then, before even Shadow was able to move, he sees... Oh, multiple robots, bigger than, you know, Sonic is, and, well, Sonic goes, Hey, Tails, how much money do you think I can destroy these guys so easily? Which, Tails just says, I don't even want to bet on that. It's like, what? You don't want to make me, like, 20 chili dogs again? And Tails is like, I could just invent a machine to make you them, but still. And so, the guy with the red hair just comes to like, Ugh, you two need to stop arguing on this. Come on, let's get this job done with. Son just goes, all right, Knuckles. Wants to get back. You want to get back to protect your precious emerald? He's like, yes. I'm the guardian after all. And he was like, yeah, yeah. Sorry for for you know, being so. And then Tails and well, Tails and Knuckles says grumpy. He goes, <laughs> I didn't get much sleep last night. Where Shadow just said, you forgot to do Mr. Aizawa's homework, didn't you? And he was like, uh, 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 yeah, pretty much. <laughs> so they get into a fine visit, you know, a ready position to fight, and, well, then they hear a man, goes like, uh, darn you, Sonic! 
If only, you know, you weren't around, I could easily take over this world and make the great Eggman Empire. As Charlie was like, you gotta be kidding me. So he just raised up his hand, he goes, Chaos Spears! And a whole bunch of, you know, Chaos Spears go at the robots, destroying them easily. Which, no one knows who did it. Son doesn't even know who did it. Tails doesn't even know. And then, he, you know, Shad just crosses his arms and just says, Chaos Control. And teleports away. Which, when Edman looked where, the, where it was coming from, he was too busy dodging them. He sees there was no one there. And he goes like, who did this? And Sonic was like, we don't know. I mean, we're just confused as you. As Eggman just says, uh, I'll retreat for now, but I'll come back later. Maybe. I'll have to figure this all out. He just flies away. So, Taylor's just saying, um, Sonic, where or what, you know, was that? And where did it go? He was like, how do you think I know, buddy? <laughs> Well, to figure this out too. So, Knuckles says, "Yeah, let's go back to UA." So, on the, you know, basically when they're leaving, um, I saw when Inko were already heading home. Shadows just called them up, and I was like, "Got it all done, Mom, and Dad." <sighs> Look, I'm gonna stay out for a little bit, get to know the surroundings. I can already tell where we live if I run around fast enough. So, you know. Inko just says, please just be safe, okay? He's like, I will, I will, don't worry. Alright. And so she goes, good. Now, be home by, well, eight. No later. He was like, promise, I will. I'd all be like, yeah. Then we can start with your training, which he's like, uh, huh? He was like, I work and I'm gonna be sleeping after dinner, so when eight o'clock you get home, we can train. I want to see how good you are in hand-to-hand -hand combat. If you guys are wondering, he was on speakerphone, you know, on Inko's phone. So he was like, okay, fine. I'll just want me to buy you anything. He says, coffee. Can you bring it over to UA? He's like, all right, bye. Uh, I guess I should say dad and mom. They not. I mean, they say yes. And he was like, all right, bye dad, bye mom. And, you know, he hangs up the phone. Inko is always smiling. And, well, so, Shadow's walking around a place in Japan. You know, around the town, just looking around and such. He sees a couple of places he like. Clothing store. Um, they basically calf. A basic a music store too and well his is like one of the places he likes because well I said he was trained to, you know he was trained in guns so I think I said that if you guys don't realize yes this is you know is it cool or should I say shadow but he's trained in guns so uh, gun store but this is like a BB gun store don't worry but he's thinking I wonder if I can modify them to be real <laughs> uh, wait, bad idea. Mom would kill me. Yeah. <laughs> Doctor Inko never liked me to use guns. I just prefer my hand to hands. And so he kind of just walks around more. Then all of a sudden he hears the word, you know, he hears someone screaming, Sonic! And basically hugs him from behind, saying, I found you finally! And he's like, uh, uh, huh? I mean, it's, like, if you're wondering, um, how could this girl, I mean, how could this girl that recognize who he is, I mean, not, you know, tell this is not Sonic, we all know this is kind of the running gag thing, this is gonna happen a little, like, that's what might happen one time and such, and, well, here's the thing, um, I just wanted to, this is kind of a joke, because it has happened to Shadow one time, and I just wanted to, you know, have that happen. So, basically, um, she was on the way to school. School starts a little bit later in the day. I mean, they got, I mean, they start around 11, not, you know, like, or like at 8, so they always have a little time to walk around and such, and 
uh, Sonic and Tails and, well, Sonic ran away, Tails followed Sonic, and Knuckles just went after them because, while well, they were planning something. So, yeah, this girl was looking for him, and he goes like, hey, I don't know who you are, but I ain't Sonic. And she realizes that's not Sonic's voice, she lets go, and she goes, I I I'm so sorry, I, um, he goes like, look, I know my hair is spiky and all, but still, my hair is not blue. It's black and red. How can you? And then, you know, she, he just sees her apologizing, you know, bowing her head and such. Just a Japanese bow, and he's like, uh, Look, hey, stop that, please. It's weird. People are watching. And she goes, <laughs> uh, Sorry. She's like, What's your name, girl? And she just says, Oh, my name is Amy Rose. Are you? He goes, Shadow. And that's all you need to know for right now. She was like, uh, uh, oh, <laughs> he goes, look, I don't know why you got me confused with, and she goes, um, <laughs> he was like, he just realized, he was like, wait, you're a fangirl of Sonic's, right, so you, with me almost looking, have like similar hair, you, she then nods, and she said she could only see the hair, and, and then it was like, it didn't matter, you know, what color it was. She said it just went like she went blind mode, and he was like, "Crazy fangirl!" And all of a sudden, she gets out the hammer, and she was like, "You want to say that again?" And he's like, "Please, what can that do?" And she tries to hit it with the hammer. He jumps out of the way, and he goes like, <laughs> "Too slow." She was like, "How are you so fast?" And he goes like, "Um, I don't know, speed quirk." She was like. Uh, Another speedster? He was like, yeah, pretty much. But as then he basically disappears in front of her eyes, and it's right behind her, but he goes, but I'm way faster than that, faker. And she does scream. <laughs> and he does chuckle. He goes like, <laughs> eh, I didn't know you can scream that loud. And she goes like, you almost gave me a heart attack. He goes like, eh. I mean, you, you didn't die. I mean, I could always revive you anyways. She was like, you're definitely not Sonic. He was like, of course, I'm Shadow. You can say I'm like a opposite version of him. So she goes, so wait, you're a... So what are you saying, you're a copy? I mean, oh, did my voice just crack? My voice just cracked. Oh god, no. Uh, I don't want to go through puberty again. <laughs> Joke, all jokes aside, anyways. Um, she goes, so what, you're saying you're the faker? He's like... <sighs> Okay, first of all, I don't, even know even, I don't even know why I called him a faker. It just came out of my mouth like that. Which, I'm sorry. Since you're a fangirl and all. She does say, that's alright. So, can you tell me a little bit more about yourself? He was like... And then basically, I just realized. He looks up and down. He was like, wait, that's a school uniform. Are you in UA High, you know, UA high School? She nods and he goes like... He looks at the time and goes like, you're going to be late. She's like, ah! Oh crap, Mr. Aizawa's going too. Wait, Mr. Aizawa? She goes, mm hmm. He's like, uh, I have to go to UA anyways. And I don't know where it is, so. Come on. I'll explain to him when I get there. And she was like, uh, okay. So they go to the coffee shop. He just gets to my espresso. And, you know, they walk all the way to UA. I mean, he got two espressos one for him and one for you know, Aizawa. And so, basically, on the way, they talk and chat, and Amy just, like, he just, I mean, he does, like, then ask her to hold the, the espresso in his left hand. She does. He calls up Mark and, you know, says, hey, um, I'm talking to somebody who's asking questions about me. I want to tell them about my past and the whole entire, uh, DNA from, you know, thing. And Mark just says, who is it? Amy Rose. Which Marta says, yeah, but just don't tell her to tell no one. He's like, got it. So he hangs up, he puts away his phone, he asks her for her bath for the, you know, the espresso. So, what happens is that, um, he just says, you know, this is kind of like a top secret thing. And the only reason why is, you need to know, is because, well, your friends, you know, Sonic, well, <laughs> Allow me to explain this to you. 
So he kind of explains where he's from. The times where quirks were coming around, and they thought, oh, quirkless people can have quirks. So they took a blue hair spiky speedster, went by the name of Sonic. And Amy goes, like, wait, so I remember Sonic saying about every new kid that's a boy that has, you know, that's always named Sonic in the family. Well, the one that had the like, spiky blue hair and such in the speed quirk that's always getting stronger over generations and generations. He goes, yeah, and basically, you could say the very first Sonic gave his DNA to scientists, and well, we they kind of made more of it and gave it to kids, and just, I was one of them in that experiment. Don't worry, we were treated nicely and fair and such, and no, I don't know what happened to anyone else. All I know is they were given to people. They're like, huh? She literally was like, huh? People? He's like, people of the scientists absolutely adopted them. Like, literally took them in as their own kids. I mean, I did see them from time to time before I left for Space Colony Arc, but, eh. She goes, Space Colony? He's like, yeah, no top secret. Hush, hush. You say anything, you're dead. He's like, eh. Then why did you? He was like, you asked me questions. I told you. And she was like, I wish I never asked you questions. And he just laughs at that. So, they go over to UA, and, well, when they walk in, she goes, wait, you're going to have to. And he just teleports right behind the security system door, and he goes like, you coming? She's like, so she gets in, they go all the way over to class and went, hey, Nezu seen who you like, just saw him teleport. It's like, what? How? Why is this not going off? And so he kind of keeps an eye on him until he sees him go to class one. Hey, Amy opens up the door. She goes, I'm sorry, I'm late, Mr. Eisenhower. It was just I ran into. And he goes, yo, dad, got your espresso here. And besides all of, you know, is like set up, you know, basically not in cop promo. He was like, ah, thanks. So Shadow walks over to him, you know, gives him the espresso. He's like, there's like, Shadow's just sipping his own. He's like, anyways, I'm gonna go out. I'm probably gonna go back home, fix, I mean, work on the bike. Heck, can maybe learn some new martial arts skills on. Wait, I have to go shopping for my room, he says out loud. He was like, yeah, your mom's. You know, dropped me off. She's literally head on her way home. Well, she probably is home right now. So you guys will probably go out and get stuff for your place to live in. He was like, yep, anyways, bye. He just walk and, you know, he's just leaving and then, well, he just looks at, but before he goes out, he just looks at everyone because he just felt like all eyes staring on him. And then he takes a sip of his, his coffee. He was like, what? Never see a spiky, spike, uh, spiky black and red hair, right? You know, spiky and black and red hair, you know, person. Jeez, heroes. And then Amy says, "Bye, Shadow." And he's like, "Yeah, yeah, whatever, Rose." And you know, Sonic's like, "Huh? Are you two friends?" Sonic just asks, and he's like, "She's like, um, kinda." In which, you know, she just gets a text message on her phone, and he was like, Don't ask how I got this. Someone just gave me it. Basically, she just says, like the zombie. And basically, it's all just like, puts a thumbs up to her, and he says, Thank you for being this friend. He, he just needs some right now. And she was like, <laughs> I understand. Which, as I just realized what she meant by that, and he was like... So, inside, he's going like, Yes! My new son just finally made a first friend! And by now, he's like, Alright, everyone, let's get back to class. And so... He, his dad just be like, I can't believe my dad gave me her phone number. Seriously, is he even allowed to give any information out to people? That's illegal, right? Yeah. Yeah. Then he's just like taking a sip of his coffee. He's like, I'm just gonna pretend she gave me it. I'm not dealing with this crud today. So, so basically, mm, and then wait, he looks in his pocket. He was like, 
Wait a minute. I forgot where we were at the coffee shop. She gave me her number. I put it in. And then Amy just literally just texted him saying, Did you forget I gave you my number? He was like, Yes. And then she goes, LOL. And he's like, Gah. I hate that I know that term. And then he just puts dot, dot, dot. He goes, Whatever. I'll talk to you later, I guess. Or something. I don't know. So, you know. And don't worry. They're just going to be friends. So basically, Shadow's walk around, I mean, gets, like, walks around, and sees some more of the places, sees electronic stores, um, some places for furniture and such, and then he gets, you know, back over to Inko's, you know, what should I say, his home. He goes, Mom, I'm home. She goes, basically, it was, like, at lunch, so she goes, Shadow! He's like, yeah, so... What are we gonna do? Eat for something first and then go out shopping? She does nod. He's like, alright. So, basically, she asks, So, do you have the chaos symbol still? And he just opens up his hand and the chaos symbol just pops, like, comes through a light, basically. Pop out of nowhere. He just holds it and he goes, like, I think I figured out how this works. She says, huh? He goes, like, Since I have chaos energy, my body naturally is, you know, drawn. You know, draws it to me, basically. I'm able to sense it, too. So, basically, I think the chaos... I'm able to absorb the chaos emerald. It's just like Sonic, when he goes super. But with me, so I can store it, I just do that with one. Without, you know, using its power. She does not saying that does not make sense. He goes like, yeah, anyways. Let's eat and then just head out. So, they eat. They head out, they buy a bed, mattress, um, bookshelf, table, TV, dresser, desk, basically. They buy a lot of stuff. In which, surprisingly, it was actually surprised that Inko was able to afford it all. And as I was, you know, told by Inko, you know, that she bought this stuff and how much it cost all together. And he goes like, that's fine. I mean, we were going to have to you know, spend that much anyways. She does agree. So, yeah. So, after that, and, like, they, basically, they do have everything moved in right away. Because it's like, that, because this store that they went to was like, we you buy it, we move it in right away, basically. And you don't have to pay for the move, we just do it our own. So... Yeah, lucky for them. So anyways. After everything was all put into place and such, he was like, huh. This looks pretty nice. And I just have to get some stuff for it. So maybe some books and some... Hmm. I guess... I guess I just have to get some stuff, you heck. Books is one thing. I had to get maybe... No, game system as such. And then he look, just looks at Inko and he's like, You know, I do know how to use guns, right? She does be like, looking at me like, When? He was like, Um, Mark? Which then she just calls up Mark right away and she goes like, Did you teach Shadow how to use guns way back when? And he goes like, Oh yeah, besides riding the bike, I, may, I showed him how to use a gun. He learned very quickly. <laughs> In which he was like, Why? He was like, He was interested and he wanted to learn and he picked up pretty quickly. I mean, yes, he wants to buy, you know, guns and such, but he was afraid you won't let him. He was, I won't let him anyways. And he was like, Yeah, you're just like your grandma. Never liked it when he used the gun either. She just sighs and be like, Whatever. So, you know, she hangs up and he goes like, You're not allowed to use guns in this household. And he's like, fair enough. So, he just says to her, um, he's gonna just go online and find whatever he likes. She does, like, say, you mind if I? He was like, yeah, yeah. You wanna see what I'm gonna get? No way I like and dislikes are, so that's alright. So, what they do is... Well, he goes online, he basically looks up some, well, something she didn't renew. She was like, wait, so you, 
He was him buying some. Well, I made an account with. Well, this. I'm gonna say, like, he makes an account with some, like, music app that I just put on his computer. You guys can guess. I'm not gonna say what it is, but just some name. You guys can figure out the name if you guys want. Or make it up. I don't care. But it's, like, it just allows him to listen to music, any music he wants. And plus, he bought some stuff online. Basically, that's gonna be here in the next two to three days. Books, manuals, and, well, let's just say, um, how to repair clothing if needed. And cooking books. And he goes just like, eh, why well, cooking? He's like, if I'm going to live on my own someday, I have to learn how to cook and repair stuff. So, yeah. She does not in agreement. So, after that, the day for him isn't really too much. She just spends time with Inko. She gets to know him. He gets to know her. And such relative easily. So Azal gets home, he sees shadows there and which um how can I say this? <gasps> when Shadow gets there, I mean not much but Azal gets there, he was like I hate my class And he was like, um Dad, what happened to you? He was like the kids wanna stop asking me questions about you. Ugh. Especially that Sonic kid. He basically, I guess, is worried about the Amy Rose falling for you or something. Which I was just like, literally, the just looks at him, and as I was just looking back at him, and he, he just says, he likes her but can't admit it. They both just say it out loud, and yeah. So. After that little thing, they do eat dinner and such, and he does, like, at 8 o'clock, when I was out, after Zavo, you know, wakes up, he was like, alright, let's go outside. He's like, oh, yeah, yeah, oh man, let's get this over and done with. So, basically, Shadow gets to the fine stance, Azal gets in a fine stance, and when they fight, it's very intense, and Inko's even surprised, and Azal was like, like, his strength, because of, well, Shadow is always strong because of Chaos Energy, I believe, so I would say his strength is enhanced by Chaos Energy. So basically, I mean, he's finding out that he's strong, which he's, which right away he's trying to hold back. And their fight is, Azawa throws a punch, Azuku dodges, he grabs his arm, throws him over, Azawa lands on his feet, jumps right at Azuku, tries to kick him in the face. Azuku then even blocks it with his arm, throws a kick right into Azawa. Him getting hit, but also holding onto his arm and then grabbing Azuku's hair and headbutting. Basically, it's you know combat training, and which I was always like, "Oh crap, I did it!" And basically, he's they don't see no blood, nothing. He was like, "Huh, that tickled," which I was always like, uh, uh. "He's like what?" I forgot. I mean, you guys don't understand. I mean, you guys should realize chaos also chaos energy also enhances enhances my physical durability. So even a building probably won't even hurt me if it falls on me. Which I was out when Inko are just like dumbfounded. So they continue on fighting, which is just sparring. You know, for them basically just to test out his ability. And after a little after some time, they stop and I was out was like, okay. You're very, very talented, good, amazing. So, uh, well, um, yeah, I know, I'm just messing around with it. Yeah, I know. My fighting capabilities are leagues above most kids my age. I mean, I am the ultimate life form after all, so. I mean, Aizawa nods. In agreement. And well, as I just realized, he does have some, I mean, his ribs are bruised a little. And which, he was like, ah, okay, my ribs are actually hurt. Uh, he looks at his shadow and, well, he just sighs. And he was like, come here, dad. So, he used chaos energy to heal him and he's like, uh, uh, how did you, he was like, 
I test out my full capabilities before I know what I can do. Well, I mean, not my full, full capabilities, just a little bit of them. Because it has increased over the years, I believe. I'm not too sure about it, but anyways. So, as Shadow says that, basically... Hold on, you're about to hear my dog bark. Right. As I was saying before I had to stop, um, about him being strong, you know, for a kid his age and such. Yeah, so, because now, as I went and go realize that Physic was basically probably even stronger than most, I mean, probably even, you know, <laughs> Isavo, basically, you know, better than hand to hand combat. But Izuku says, nah, I just need to uh, improve more. Which he was like, how much improvement? He was like, well, I guess I was, well, frozen for so long. There's probably new martial arts that came out, so gotta relearn it all. So yeah, which is how it nods. So after that, they just fall asleep. You know, like Izuku was just tired. When I was like, Shadow was just tired, so he's just gonna go to bed early. And yeah, that happens. So, the next day, well, in this case, how can I say this? Sonic, you know, and Tails and Knuckles are still trying to figure out who made those Chaos Spears and such. Nobody know. I mean, they can't figure it out. Amy is texting Shadow because she's just like, you know, interested in, well, not like, in, like in a lovey dovey way, just interested in him. You know, like he's he was frozen for so long, and he was in the age where quirks were just coming out. So basically, like this is something that she's kind of curious on. Which you know, Shadow just says like, okay, so any more else questions to ask, or she goes um. Yeah, did you like it? And he goes, no. I was only eight years old when my parents died, and I was in an orphanage. I was up on the Space Colony Ark for about, thir you know, for only a couple of years. And, well, you know the rest. She nods. Um, she, did get a, she did get a call from, well, she did get a visit from Mark and Issei. And they explained the whole entire situation with him. And Amy's parents were shocked that she met someone like, you know, Shadow. A.K.A. Zuku. She knows his real name, too. Well, his old name. And so, she promised to keep his secret. So, basically, technically, I'm making Amy the friend that he has. You know, the only friend he has at this point. You know, in time. He's gonna get more, just not, you know, right away. So, basically, um, Mina knows, like, you know, she walks over to Amy. And she goes, like, so, who you talk to? Which, Amy just goes, oh, just a friend. She goes, really? Is he not? He goes, no, you know how I am with Sonic. And she goes, yeah, yeah, so I said before him. I support, you know, I want the ship to sail as much as, you know, you do, but, girl, I mean, it's going to take a long time for him to realize how much he cares about you. Which, Amy laughs about it. She goes, I know. But she does. But no, seriously, who are you talking to? And she goes, um, remember that guy that walked into class yesterday? Which me was like, no way. He basically, and she just nods. Yeah, I gave him my number when we were in a coffee shop, and he forgot about it. And he said, and he just said, a zombie man, you know, gave it to me. You know, his, my number to him, and then, it's like, so wait, technically, he gave him your number, and he forgot about it. And she goes, to be fair, he's not used to technology. You know, at all. Very much. She was like, huh? He was like, um, nothing, nothing. I forgot I said that. She was like, Alright, so, do you think he's single, Mina asks, and <laughs> Amy laughs and just says, yes, he is, and I don't think he's gonna be in a relationship anytime soon, you know, she says a question mark, which Mina just has a chuckle, and she was thinking, so, is he gonna come to UA? In which she shrugged, so she asked him, she goes, Shadow, are you ever going to come to UA? And he goes, no, what's the point? Which she just 
dot, 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 okay. <gasps> so she just tells Mina, no. Which, she's like, oh. You know, that's Mina just being upset. So, yeah. But anyways, so. While this is happening, you know, Shadow is at home. He then just realized, he was like, oh. I think I'll see if, hmm. He has, he, but he does get up. He goes to his room, he gets his jacket on, his sneakers on. He goes, Mom, let me go for a quick run over to the mall, right? She does says, okay, sweet, just be back safe. I mean, just get back safe, she says. And he was like, all right. So he does run, you know, off. And while he's running, yes, he is going really fast and, well, it's kind of hard for people to see, but they see just like a orange blur as he stops at the mall. He just says, hmm, so this is the mall nearby that I read up on. All right. So he just walks in, he looks around the place, and, well, he goes into a, well, electronic store. He was like, huh, right now I can use some headphones, so don't make cash on me. Hmm. This is going to be kind of difficult. I'll just buy it when I have, you know, when I get a chance to. When I have money on me. So, you know, he just looks around the place and such. And... My question is, would it be weird if I make him meet other characters like Blaze the Cat? Or something? Hmm. Yeah. No. No, no. I don't think it would be weird, but not this case. As when he looks around, he, um... He accidentally bump into a girl. And he goes, uh, sorry, my apologies. And she goes, no, it's quite alright. And when the school turns around, he goes, hmm, she, she, I mean, he's just thinking this, he was like, she looks kind of familiar. Where have I seen her before? She was like, um, are you okay? He was like, yes, it's just, um, it seems like I saw you before. My name is Shadow. It's a pleasure to meet you. And where she does say, it's, it's nice to meet you too, Shadow. My name is Sally, Sally Acorn. And he's like, oh. And then he realizes, like, oh, yes. <laughs> I remember you, a royal family that's basically moved to Japan. Right? She does nod. She was like, yep. I'm going to UA, you know, soon, so we're just suddenly moving in. He was like, I'm. I lived in Japan most of my life, and I've gone to a new family. She was like, Wait, you were adopted? Yes. And don't worry, it was, well, a long time overdue adoption, you could say. I was, you know, she, she doesn't understand it, but she just goes with issues. So, why are you here? He was like, oh, just looking around, trying to find some headphones to wear, because I just got a music app on my phone, and I just have an account with them, so. She was like, oh, okay. Um, then why haven't you? He was like, Realize I had no cash on me. She does laugh at that, and she goes, All right, then, I'll do you a favor. Since, well, you know, you have no cash on you, you owe me one, all right? He was like, uh, you sure? She goes, mm-hmm, it's no problem. He's like, all right. So, basically, she, Shadow picks out some headphones. Um, ones that can actually attach to his ears, so that way if he ever runs, they know, they'll never fall out and such. The waterproof, you know, rainproof, basically. There's, they're good just to wear all around. So, and they didn't cost that much. So, she just says, there you go. He was like, uh, thank you. I'll, I really appreciate this, Sally. And good luck to you in UA. She asks, why aren't you in UA? He goes like, oh, <laughs> reasons. Um, I haven't had my job yet. 
It's because you're working already at... Because I'd rather work than be in school, so... And it's kind of okay. She was like, no, it's not. A child, I mean, a teenager should be in school. It's like, no, seriously, it's okay. My situation's a bit unique, so don't worry about it, all right? She does look at him in a curious look, and she just says, fine. But if you need anything from me, here. She gives him, you know, here's my contact information. And he's like, all right. So he's like, okay, so... Is this how I... Yeah. Okay, this is how I did before. Gotcha. So basically then he figures out... He was Sally Acorn. Nickname. Princess. Acorn. <laughs> he, he basically shows her it. And she was like... Eh, why did you... He was like... It's her title. And I think it would be a funny nickname if I called you it. She was like... Get rid of that. And he was like... Alright. Alright. So he gets rid of it. And just... This is Sally Acorn. And he goes like, all right, there you go. It's all done. You're on my phone. So, uh, I'm going to go out now. Hopefully we meet again someday. Just then, something happens. Three different robots appear, you know, in the mall. It's like crash into the mall, basically. Land. And he goes like, and they just basically here goes like, surrender, Sally, corn, come with us with... So, you know, come back with us to Dr. Robotnik. And he was like, Dr. Robotnik? She was, Dr. Eggman, this is one of the reasons why I moved here. Because the speedster, the blue speedster is here. And Shadow's like, <laughs> So, he only came in for the protection of Sonic the Hedgehog. And she, and then she goes, um, and also something else. He was like, oh, what might that be? She does like, Blush, and he goes to ask him to, and he goes like, "Oh, never mind then." All right. So he just walks up. And he goes like, "I'm gonna end this very quickly." When he says that to the robots, and the robots just like look at him. He's like, "Who are you?" And he goes like, huh, "It doesn't matter who I am. All that matters is this." As all of a sudden, he just runs, but it's so fast the robots couldn't even see him, and they just see him like. Goes right through the robots, kind of one and a half, and immediately just like spin dash into another one, destroying it. Like, you know, he actually goes through the robot, which then he lands on his feet and just jumps towards the third one and punches it in, right in the head, just destroying it. He goes, and then he just like, you know, lands. He goes, like, because he won't even remember me. Which Sally's shot by, and he was like, do you want me to walk you home, Princess Acorn? She's like, Shadow? He just chuckles and goes like, Come on, let's get you home before more robots appear. She does, you know, nod and such. And they get her home. He gets her home. Turns out it wasn't. she wasn't really that far away. It's only five minutes away. And he goes like, I should just like you walk home by yourself. She does say, like, really? You'll let the poor defenseless girl walk all by her lonesome home? He's like, okay, defenseless, maybe. Poor, you can easily have technology to help you out. She does not, and he's like, of course I did. But I thank you for destroying the robots anyways. He's like, no problem. I'll see you around. And just, you know, walks away. So she does wonder, who is he really? She wants to figure that out, and, you know, um, Shadow just calls up Mark, he goes like, Mark, um, there's a girl I met named Sally Acorn, and before you say anything, yes, the princess, she may look into me, so, as he goes, oh, we already fabricated a whole bunch of stories, kind of just made it where it's, um, you know, your original, you know, like, you're in an orphanage, but we just put it in there, you're there for, until you were 13, and, yeah, and he's like, okay, so, so after that, I mean, he ended it so quickly, it never went onto the news or anything, but they just know that someone took down the robots, 
Sally told her parents they were surprised but happy she was safe. She looked she tried looked into Shadow the Hedgehog when well, I Shadow the Hedgehog just into Shadow. And well just to find out he was an orphan, got adopted at the age of thirteen by a two couple. Which after that it's like nothing really else. She's just wondering what the heck. So if you guys are wondering, yeah, she's a princess. Could I mean, yes, she's a princess, and two, she would be. I mean, Sally would technically do this just to make sure of her own safety and her parents' safety, you know, and everything else. So, doesn't mean uh, she's gonna think of it as her enemy. Just trying to make sure that, you know, she is safe along with her parents and anyone else. So. Shadow's just, you know, walking home now, and then he gets a call from this unknown number. He gets serious and goes like, hello. He goes like, ah, you're Agent Shadow. It's me, the leader of Gun. He's like, oh? Hello there, boss. I didn't mean to, you know, cause any trouble for you since I'm just a newbie. When do I start my, he goes, oh, no need for your orientation. I don't worry. I saw what you did. It's pretty amazing how you took down the robot so quickly. Payment is already given to you. He's like, huh? Seriously? He goes, yes. Basically, there's an account already made. I already mailed information to your house. Along with, well, an email to you. Which, he was like, uh, I never made an email. He's like, oh, yes. I'll just resend to you. Just make one real quick, please. So he does, and they go like there, and he just says, "What is it?" And they just says, "Shadow, twelve eight seven. I don't know. What else do you want to say?" And then he puts it all down, and then he's like, "There." So, basically, Shadow sees the amount of money. He's rich, basically. And he's like, um, thank you. I didn't know protecting a princess was. He goes, you defend a princess from Dr. Eggman's robots. I mean, this is technically be, like, enough money. So, don't you worry. Anyways, Rouge will be going to UA. You? He's like, nah, I'm staying out of it. I'm sorry if you need me there. He's like, oh, no, 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 it's fine. Let's do whatever you feel like it's necessary. But if we need you overseas, we'll, we will tell you. He says, I understand that. Thank you. It's no problem. So. Because of this. Shadow just feels like. He doesn't know what to do. He just calls him. And, you know, his mom be like. Um. She goes, yes, dear. He's like, do you want to go out see tonight? She goes, sure. Why not? He's like, great, um, you never believe how much money I have. And he just tells her I'm out, she's just silent for a few minutes, and he's like, I know. I'll meet you when I'm home. She does say, okay. So when the, when he gets home, she basically, it did take like an hour or two, so. When he got home, he sees an envelope full, like, and she just gives it to him. So when he opens it, he sees everything that, you know, the bank information was and such. And the card was already there, and he's like, huh, all right then, so yeah, and then he's just like, well, let's go out to sleep when dad gets home, so after that, they eat, you know, after Izawa gets home, he they eat, they go out, they had time and fun together, and then, whoa, and then basically, I mean, Nothing really interesting happens in this part, all right. Besides the fighting, so I I didn't really think I can only think of a few things that could happen in this part of one, and this is how far I could think up too. So, it would have been in UA. It would have been just the heroes versus villains, since it was like their first day at UA, and the here obviously the, you know US J will be coming up in like the next part, so yeah. So anyways, I hope you guys all have a nice day, night, wherever you are. And this video will come out when I am sleeping. And then I probably will make the Zuku, what is Deku, 
was Springtrap, and that's going to be a very complicated and very weird what-if. I, I will admit. Anyways, bye everyone.